Welcome to another fabulous episode of My Orgasmic Life. I'm your hostess with the mostess, Gaia Morissette. And today's episode is brought to you by Tickle.life. T. <laughs> Oh, and the next thing before we get into our topic today, uh, just as a quick reminder, um, please join Patreon, my Patreon, to donate money to the overhead cost of running the show. Um, I show it for you guys. It'd be great for you guys to show it back for me, okay? So just so that we're on the same page, consent. This is what I, why I'm doing this for you. Uh, you could help with, you know, donating $5 <laughs> a month to help me. And that'll also help, and you also get inc exclusive content. So I will put uh, in the show notes uh, the link to to join Patreon and, um, and in the description of the video, okay? All right, so let's get into our topic. So this topic is very interesting. Um, you know, it's about what does it mean to be an ethical, lustful man in our current society? And the reason that I wanted to have this conversation was because I was recently, like, I see, I have a lot of male clients that come see me and they're really super awesome guys and they're super nice guys. And one of the big pieces around their sexuality is about this piece around, there's no role models. There's no, there's no, uh, mir no space in which is mirrored to uh, men for this construct of being healthy around your sexuality. Either you're seen as, uh, you know, either you're a player and you're disrespectful and you're disrespectful to women and you don't, re you know, you're disrespectful to others around your sexuality and you, you know, you don't ask for consent. And um, so you're either like, you know, that guy or you're like the super nice guy um, who is like, you know, um, squashed his primal lustful self um, in order to not be that other guy. And the reason I wanted to have this conversation, because I was like, so I, I, you know, I've been dealing with this a lot recently and with throughout my history as a sexual wellness specialist, um, this whole construct of how do you be a good guy and lustful and own your sexual power? How do you do that? And then I was recently talking to my partner um, this weekend and we were, you know, diving into it and, you know, and he's, you know, working on his stuff. And, and, you know, I, I, again, I was like, so what does a, a really respectful, nice, yet horny, lustful guy, um, how does he behave? How does he act? What does he look like? Where does he, you know, what role models? And I started asking him, like, what role models does he have? And he, he didn't come up with anything. He had nothing. So I was like, oh, wow, I don't think there is any. So I'm starting, so I started this conversation for that reason. So if you know, and this would be really helpful for me and for all of my clients and for all of the listeners and audience, um, if you happen to know of any kind of like, whether that's porn, um, where there is that element of being incredibly uh, primal and lustful and incredibly respectful in that space, um, please send me private, some private messages or send me an email uh, to Gaia at succulentliving.com um, of some resources so that I can pass those, some of those resources on to my people and to my tribe. And I'll, you know, because I think it's really important is that like, we don't have that framework. And then I was recently watching and it was just really fascinating how, like, I know that I've had some incredible lovers over my life, um, male lovers over my life who are like raw and raunchy and primal and like can tap into their lust but also are incredibly kind and loving and respectful and, you know, appreciate and respect me and adore me and all those things. And so I know it's a possibility. Um, it's just a matter of like, where do we have those role models? Where do we see that? 
so yeah, I just, again, you know, what does it mean to be primal and lustful? And is it okay for us to be primal and lustful? So I'm a hell yeah. <laughs> That's, that's kind of what I do in the world um, is support everybody to be primal and lustful, but in an ethical way. Like, how do we move with our, like, primal lust with ethics in the sense of doing no harm to ourselves or to the others around us? And how do we move from this place of consent? And what does that look like in, in you know, in a world that we, we say consent um, you know, takes, takes the mood out. These are, these are, these are not my belief systems. Okay. By the way, I just need to, you know, solidify that is that, you know, this ideology around, well, if I have to ask somebody for, you know, I really want to kiss you passionately, you know, may I, um, that takes out, you know, the, and, and this is, I've heard this on both ends of the spectrum, like the person who wants to kiss the person and the person who wants to be kissed is like, well, if they ask, it takes, it takes away the, the spontaneity and the, the primal lust and the desire piece of it, which I totally disagree because you can do it in a really sexy way, which, you know, um, you know, your lips are so luscious that I need to taste them. May I? Well. Ooh. <laughs> yes, you may. Or it gives me an opportunity to say, no, no, I'm not into that. However, you know, I can counter, I can counter that with um, no, but I would really like you to grab my hair. <laughs> you know, like it gives us opportunities to, to, to be able to communicate during our, the acts. Everybody gets to own and take responsibility for what we desire. And I think that's the the piece that's the the problem in the dance around, um, you know, how do we move in an ethical way um, with our sexual lust and um, where we're not supposed to talk about it? Because I think that's the core of it is that we're, it's not okay for us to be lustful. So first of all, that's the problem. We're not allowed to be as a societally in North America, we're not allowed to be in lust. And if we kind of follow that back through time, um, that, that has a lot of religious connotations to it, um, that lust is a sin, lust is bad, lust is evil, lust is wrong, okay? So that's, I think, one piece of it. Two, I think the secondary piece of why lust is scary is because it's really intense. Like lust is a really primal, like pure, raw, sexual lust. <laughs> Like, it's really fucking hot, but it's also incredibly uh, uncomfortable because it can be intense and it can be scary. And because a lot of people um, have been on the receiving end of disrespect or trauma or abuse or violation um, in itself, lust as just a feeling, just as a uh, has motivated people throughout time to be inappropriate with that without consent and so you don't want to if you're a good guy and you're you know a person who is moving from that place of like I don't want to do harm to myself or others um, that piece of surrendering to your lust and the feeling of desire and wanting and lusting um, can be terrifying because the only thing that you might have seen is that men that move that way haven't been in a, in a respectful space. So you might be afraid of that. So often what will happen is that you suppress your lust and you, you know, you basically only allow its surface to just barely like escape and you're controlled. And it's all about the control over this really intense, um, sensations and feelings that are coming over your body so learning how to surrender to your lust in a way that is honorable and ethical to yourself and others is something that we're not taught we're just not taught it we're not taught it anywhere 
So either you surrender to your lust and you're, you're disrespectful and potentially abusive with it, um, or you just suppress it because it's terrifying. No one has taught anybody how to actually like, how do we sit in that? How do we move from that place? So how do we move? How do we start that process? Well, I say the first thing is that we need to um, let go of the stories and the beliefs that um, communication and asking and creating consent is not sexy. So that's the first piece that we need to let go of. We can, we can find consent, we can create consent by communication in a new way. All right. So everybody who's on receiving saying it's hot that you ask me. Because what that does is when somebody takes the time to ask you, so the people who are on the receiving ending of that ask, um, it gives you the opportunity to own your sexuality. It gives you an opportunity to own whether or not you want to or you don't want to. Now, there are, there are lots of different layers of that and lots of people have different um, belief systems around that. But for me personally, um, being able to say, yes, I want that, or no, I don't want that, is a big piece of me reclaiming my sexuality, my sexual power, and my own sexual desires and lust. And that has been tr is incredibly transformational for me and for my clients that I see over and over and over again. Learning how to say yes and learning how to say no, and owning the yes and owning the no. Also, when we ask, we risk. So in that asking, we are owning that this is our desires. We are asking from a place, not from a place of the expectation the person's going to say yes. I am asking not with, it's an ask, it's not a demand. So if I'm asking, may I kiss you? I really want to kiss you. And then my desire in that moment is to kiss you or that desire in that moment is to tweak your nipples or that desire is to, you know, finger you or whatever it is, like whatever that desire is, you know, me asking for that desire to be met. There's a couple of different things. And this is why, you know, on a societal level, we kind of don't do it is because it's a, it's a risk. There's a risk on many levels. It's a risk that somebody's going to, you know, pervert shame you. Um, it's a risk that somebody's going to reject you. It's a risk that um, somebody's going to freak out about it. Like the, it's vulnerable, and it's also you owning that your desire. Like this is what I desire, and may I, you know, may we, you know, may we engage in this together. So I say the first part of moving from this place of owning our sexuality and owning our lust is in the piece around being able to communicate and own it, asking and saying yes or saying no. The second piece is to clear out all of our own belief systems around why it's not safe for us to embrace lust. We can't move ethically with our sexual desires and our lusts and our horniness if we don't feel safe to have it. And so there's a reason why we don't feel safe. It may be one reason or it may be many reasons why that wasn't a safe thing culturally, societally, uh, you know, parentally, uh, peers, um, you know, uh, a partner, um, partners, like there's, there's lots of reasons why that that wasn't a safe space. And so you shut it down. And any kind of, you know, attachment or connection to it is shut down. So that is the other secondary thing is to figure out what it is, and then we can reprogram it. Once you know what it is, then you can start to reprogram it. How do you reprogram? That's more complex. <laughs> That's way more complex than I can do in a podcast. <laughs> That's when I need to call Gaia. <laughs> Let's call Gaia. Then she can help me re rewire this and reprogram this. Okay. But in the meantime, I give. But again, 
consent, 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 consent. If we move from a place of consent, then we move from a place of ethics. And consent comes in all different, around all sorts of things. And not just sexually, but in non-sexual consent, like physical touch. Don't touch somebody unless you ask permission. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know if they have trauma. You don't know how they feel about being touched. So all you touchy pe touchy feely people who I love and adore, it's important for you to be mindful of that others may not be comfortable with your touch. So, you know, before you touch somebody's arm or touch somebody's leg or give somebody a hug, just say, may I? And again, the big piece of consent is that when we ask, may I, is that you give space for them to say no. It's okay for them to say no. And it's not a rejection of you and it's not about you, it's about what they desire. Because when they actually say yes, it's, uh, it's this beautiful feeling of like complete acceptance of whatever it is, okay? So consent, consent, consent. The other piece around consent is again, just because you have a sexual relationship with somebody, this is another piece of that. Just because you have a predetermined sexual relationship with them, you want to make sure that you're, you still are continually to gaining consent, that, that, that the person has the ability to say no at any time. And um, if, it, you know, it's not like a blanket consent, like I just gave you consent and then it's consent forever. Um, just because I gave you consent doesn't mean that it's there forever. And at any, any time, any moment, I may not be feeling in that mood and I might, you know, basically say no, thank you. Or the person may say, no, thank you. It's important to give people space to do that. And make it playful and make it sexy and make it so that everybody is, it's not an intense thing. It's like not a, you know, and, and I know that that's hard because we don't, we've not been taught that it's okay to say no. And I know it's hard because it's, we've not been taught to ask because we might get rejected and that might be terrifying. I know that it's not an easy thing to do, but if you really want to be that ethical, lusty, and primal sexual being that all of us deserve to be, then that's the place that we start in how we start to navigate with that. All right. So I would love to hear people's thoughts. I would love to hear some feedback. Um, I would love to dive deeper into this conversation. So if there's any guests that might want to have, have a conversation with me about this, around what it's like to be, what does it mean? If anybody knows anybody who's like, you know, super ethical, but like primal, lustful, sexual guy, um, and is moving in a really honorable and ethical way with that, um, you know, that might be willing to have a conversation with me, I would love to dive into, you know, having some interviews and, and like diving into this because it's a huge problem. And it's a huge problem for anybody who identifies as male that we are, you know, and it's a huge problem that we as a society haven't given or taught, um, anybody how to do this in an honorable ethical way and without shame because you move from this place of consent and ethics you can be dirty and naughty and inappropriate <laughs> and lustful and still be respectful throughout the whole thing and it can be hot really really hot all right so that's all. That's it. That's all. <laughs> so anybody know anybody who's a horny, lustful, uh, ethical guy who wants to have a conversation to come on the show? I would love that. Reach out to me. You can find me at GaiaMorissette.com. Um, and you can send me an email or pod, you know, you can send me a private message at GaiaMorissette.com and Gaia Morissette on all the social media platforms. And don't forget to listen to my orgasmic life podcast that can be found on all the platforms. And again, loving reminder, 
um, so come support me for a minimum of five dollars a month and you get all sorts of inclusive exclusive content um, that only you guys get and uh, it helps to pay for the show the running of the show all right I love you you're amazing thanks for spending time with me share me with your friends <laughs> We'll do another show that's all about that. <laughs> that's it. That's all. Oh, wait. And don't forget to check out my Orgasmic Life podcast, but also I host Tickle.Life's podcast. So go check out Tickle.Life and Tickle.Life's podcast. All right. Now that's it. That's all. Have a good day. Bye-bye.